Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl gameplay video. It's been a while since our last one, but Historic Brawl is back on the menu at least for a couple days. And today we're taking a look at a Magda Brawl deck, the 2 mana 2 1 a legendary Dwarf Berserker from Kaltheim. Says other dwarves we control get plus 1 plus 0. Whenever a dwarf we control becomes tapped, we get to make a treasure token, which is an artifact we can sacrifice for 1 mana of any color, or we can sacrifice 5 treasures to search our library for an artifact or dragon card and put that card straight onto the battlefield. So those are a lot of powerful abilities on just a 2 mana commander, and it's mostly those treasure abilities on Magda that we're going to be focusing on, instead of being this creature tribal deck that tries to attack and block the normal way, this is more of a combo deck that tries to go off using those treasure abilities. In fact, we're not even playing with Torbran, one of the only constructed playable dwarves we have access to. Instead, our deck is filled with cheap dwarves that can help us crew vehicles, because vehicles are a great way for us to tap or dwarves without them having to attack and by tapping our dwarves of course we get to generate treasure tokens with Magda so that's the basic game plan of the deck we've got a lot of cheap vehicles lots of cheap dwarves and those will help us generate treasure tokens and then once we sacrifice five treasures with Magda there's a whole lot of options we can choose from here at the top end and one of the main cards we're going to be searching up is Paradox Engine the five mana legendary artifact saying whenever we cast a spell untap all non-land permanents we control. So if we manage to generate five treasures, search a paradox engine. If we then cast any spell out of our hand, we get to untap all our dwarves and vehicles once again. And that means we can use those dwarves to generate more treasure tokens by crewing the vehicles once again, which will generate more mana. And by generating more mana, we can cast more spells. And you can kind of see where this is going. If we can generate a whole lot of treasures, we can start searching up basically every card out of our deck, including cards like Akuruma's Memorial, giving our creatures flying, first strike, vigilance, trample, haste, and protection from black and from red. We can maybe search up a powerful dragon like Dracuseth, which can decimate the opponent's board when it attacks, or a terror of Mount Velas, giving our creatures double strike until end of turn when it enters the battlefield. So that's one way we can potentially close out the game. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck, starting out with our 0 mana artifact Mox Amber, that can tap for red mana as long as we have Magda in play. Also a great way to untap all our non-land permanents once we search a Paradox Engine, as we can basically kickstart the combo without having to spend any mana. Then at 2 mana we've got a whole bunch of dwarves, including Axe Guard Cavalry, which can tap to give one of our creatures haste until end of turn, so that's another way of tapping one of our dwarves without having to attack with it. Then we've got Fearless Liberator, which can boast for 2 in a red, generating another 2-1 a red dwarf berserker creature token. We've got a Rimrock Knight, which we can also use as a combo trick. Then a 7 copies of 7 Dwarves, which gets plus 1 plus 1 for each other creature named 7 Dwarves we control. And our deck can have 7 copies of 7 Dwarves. Then we've got our Vault Robber, 2 mana 1-3, that for 1 mana can tap and exile a creature card from our graveyard to generate a treasure token. So it can potentially make 2 treasure tokens with a Magda in play. And then we also have Metallic Mimic, a 2 mana 2-1 two Shapeshifter, that as it enters the battlefield we choose a creature type. And then Metallic Mimic is the chosen type in addition to its other types, so also turns into a dwarf. And each other creature we control of the chosen type enters the battlefield with an additional plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. And then we've got a whole bunch of cheap vehicles as well, with Skyskiff, a 2-3 flying vehicle with a crew cost of just one. We've got Shadowed Caraval, which we're not really going to combine with any explore synergies, just a cheap vehicle that we can easily crew. And then we've got Heart of Kiron. This one's a little trickier to crew at crew 3, so it might take a few additional dwarves to crew it, but thanks to the one extra power our dwarves get from Magda, it's usually not too difficult to still crew it. And then we've got our Funeral Longboat, also just crew 1 for a 3-3 Vigilance. And then we've got some looting effects as well, as we'll see, since once we find our first vehicle, we typically don't need a second one. So we've got Reunion to discard 2 and draw 3, Thrill of Possibility discards 1 to draw 2, as well as Tormenting Voice, the Sorcery Speed version. And then at 3 mana we also get to play with Seize the Spoils, which discards 1 to draw 2 and also generates a treasure token. And then Valakut Awakening can put any number of cards from our hand on the bottom of our library and then draw that many cards plus 1. So that way we don't actually have to discard any of our payoff cards and we can put them back into our deck to eventually search up with Magda. And then we also have Hazard's Monument, a 3 mana legendary artifact, saying a red creature spells we cast cost 1 generic mana less to cast. And whenever we cast a creature spell, we may 
discard a card and if we do draw a card. So this does double duty, helping us discount our creature spells as well as giving us a nice draw discard effect. And then at 4 mana we also have Pirate Spillage, which has to discard one to draw two, and we get to make two treasure tokens, so the powered up version of Seize the Spoils. And then we've got some additional vehicles with Daredevil Dragster, a 4-4 with Crew 2 that can also potentially draw two after attacking or blocking with it twice, and Aethersphere Harvester, a 3-5 flyer that can also gain lifelink with just Crew 1, and a Gilded Assault card, a 5-1 with Trample and Crew 2, and we can also sacrifice two treasures to return it from the graveyard to our hand. And then at 4 mana, besides our Pirate Spillage, we also have Dwarven Reinforcements, which we can foretell for 2 mana and then cast for 1 in a red, generating 2 2-1 two, red Dwarf Berserker creature tokens. So that also helps with crewing our vehicles. And then at the top end, we've got our Dragons and Artifacts to search up, although we can also potentially ramp into them using the treasure tokens and just cast them normally. We've got a Glory Bringer, 4-4 four, four Dragon with Flying and Haste, and when the Glory Bringer attacks, we can exert it, which means it's not going to untap on our next on tap step, but if we do we get to deal 4 damage to target non-dragon creature and opponent controls, so it gives us access to a bit of removal. We've got Goldspan Dragon, which also has great synergy with our treasures, as a 4-4 dragon with flying and haste, and whenever Goldspan Dragon attacks or becomes a target of a spell, we get to make a treasure token, and treasures we control can sacrifice for 2 mana instead of just 1. Then we've got our Paradox Engine and Sky Sovereign Console Flagship, a 5-mana vehicle that's a 6-5 flyer with Crew 3, and when Sky Sovereign enters a battlefield or attacks, it deals 3 damage to target creature or planeswalker and opponent controls, so it gives us access to a bit more removal. And then finally, we already mentioned some of these, Chroma's Memorial giving our creatures all sorts of abilities, Drunkoseth, a 7-7 dragon, that when it attacks deals 4 damage to any target, and 3 damage to each of up to 2 other targets. We've got Terror of Mount Velos, 5-5 with Flying and Double Strike, that when it enters gives our creatures Double Strike until end of turn, and then the Immortal Sun, great at shutting down Planeswalker decks, as well as letting us draw an extra card each turn, making our spells one cheaper and giving our creatures plus one plus one, and then going over the mana base, we've got 20 basic mountains alongside one Dwarven Mine, which generates a 1-1 red Dwarf creature token if we control at least three other mountains when it enters battlefield, and then a Castle Embereth to pump up the team, and we also can't forget about Shatter Skull Smashing, which we can play as an untapped land at the cost of 3 life, otherwise a nice removal spell if we've got access to a lot of mana, and we also have the Valakut Awakening that we can potentially play as a tap land. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, facing the dreaded niv at Reborn deck. Our hand seems fine. We've got a vehicle, we've got some dwarves. So hopefully we can generate some treasure and eventually take over. And then I think I might play just a Shatter Skull tapped here. And hang on to Valakut Awakening for now. And then turn two. Usually want to lead with a vehicle, which is more difficult for the opponent to interact with. So we'll just play a Sky Skiff. And then next turn, I could play Magda, crew Sky Skiff, and play another Dwarf, which can generate one more treasure. And hope there's no Sweeper, and then we can keep generating treasure. All their opponents keeping up, three mana. They might just be unable to cast their spells, but could also mean that they've got removal for Magda at the ready. But I think I still gotta go for it here. And then we'll play seven dwarves, maybe. And then... I probably want to crew the Sky Skiff now to generate an extra treasure, as opposed to waiting in case her opponent has a sweeper. I don't want to crew Sky Skiff in response to generate a treasure. And I'm not going to need the 3-2 on defense. So we'll see. Yep, they had the Clarion, unfortunately. So Magda goes back into the command zone. Although we can still replay her next turn. Alright, Sky Sovereign the draw. So replay Magda. And crew the skiff. And then hit for two. Play a Liberator and make another treasure. And 
And then it's gonna take us a few turns to get up to five treasures here. Opponent does have all the mana they need to cast niv Mizzet here. Or no, they actually don't since they have a red-green land, a red one and a green one. So no mana for Niv. So we get to make more treasure. Probably kick things off with Awakening here since I can basically get rid of my entire hand. They might have a counterspell. Alright, another dwarf. And then we can just attack with our dwarves too here if we want. Don't know if we need to play around any flash creatures, I don't think so. And they've got an answer for the sky skiff. Fair enough. So now I'm a little sad that I got rid of my author vehicle, but we can maybe still draw into one with thrill. I could boast, we'll just wait and save our treasures for Magda. Alright, it's gonna be a Fires of Invention letting the opponent cast Niv. I'm always surprised to see this still legal in Brawl when it's banned everywhere else. It's gonna be an Ashok instead. She's gonna make a 2 3. Alright. And our opponent concedes. Well, we were gonna be able to play Goldspan Dragon which was going to generate a whole pile of uh, mana, which we could potentially translate into more goodies. We could, you know, activate Magda, maybe get a Chromos Memorial, or could also get Immortal Sun to shut down Ashok. We had a few options. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a passable hand. Could use maybe an extra two mana dwarf, but we do have reinforcements which will eventually generate two more. All right, there we go. Facing a Yarok the Desecrated deck, so we can expect a lot of ETB triggers. We'll just lead with a Skyskip for now, I think. KZ Point was holding up a Heartless Act or Eliminates. It's gonna be a Risen Reef on three. That's a good one. And hits a land. Alright, let's see what we can do. Play Magda. Crew the Skiff. Mox Amber lets us play seven dwarves. Hit for two. And then we can Crew the Skiff end of turn with the dwarves as well. Opponent it turns out Yarok, which gets two Risen Reef triggers right away. At least it didn't hit any additional lands this time. Alright, so we have a wealth of options here. I could... Play my Goldspan Dragon, making my treasure staff for double mana. I can reinforcements to get up to five treasures. And then what do we search with the five treasures? So let's say I cast reinforcements, five treasures. In fact, we have six treasures, so I can still Tormenting Voice. So I think that means we get Paradox Engine here. And then I can still Tormenting Voice. Discard the Assault cards. Seems okay. Alright, and then I can generate more mana. More treasures. Play 
play a dwarf. Cast my Goldspan Dragon. And then can crew with my summoning sig dwarves for sure. I can get back the assault cart as well. Make some more mana. I think it's time to search something with Magda. How about a Chroma's Memorial? Sure. And then I kind of want to get Drunkoseth. We could get Terra of Mount Velas. Is that lethal? Yeah, it's probably lethal. All right, sweet. So turn four kill here with our Magda combo deck. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing a an eighth of the Dire Hunt fight deck. Our hands missing cheap vehicles and cheap dwarves, so that's an easy mulligan. This is better. It's not the best hand, since our vehicle is Heart of Kiron, which is a little more difficult to crew. But still, definitely a keeper. Turn 1 Elves. Currently missing my third land, and... Magda isn't going to be able to crew Heart of Kiram by herself, so I think we just play Metallic Mimic then. It's going to be a Rhythm of the Wild from the opponents. Luckily picked up a land. So now I can play Magda, attack with Mimic. Which lets me play Heart of Kiron, which I can crew with Magda as well. And hope she survives a turn. Alright, Questing Beast is a good one. They can give it a counter so it can attack past Heart of Kiron. So I'll take five. Crew for the treasure. Right, that's a lot of seven dwarves. So can crew the hearts. out another dwarf here. Hit for four. And then end of turn I can generate three more treasure. So we could just hard cast the Chromos Memorial next turn, which is maybe enough to win. It's going to be a Paradise Druids, that's okay. Enters with a plus one counter, leaving them three mana. 
Maybe a fight spell for Magda here. Ancient Animus on Metallic Mimic. So they could have another fight spell for Heart of Kiron, but I want to get my treasures here. And then the beast might not even want to attack into my seven dwarves. And then end of turn will crew again. And then I can crew. We could, you know, get Paradox Engine and make things pretty complicated, but I think just casting Memorial is going to be plenty enough here. Sweet. That's another pretty quick one here, thanks to Triple Seven Dwarves. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand, a bit creature light with only the cavalry, up against Krenko, Tin Street, Kingpin. So you can expect maybe Goblin Tribal, some pump spells. They could definitely have some burn spells to take out our creatures, which is gonna slow us down significantly. So I think it's still a keep, but uh, if the opponent has lots of cheap removal, we could be in trouble. It's going to be Bloodlust Insider. Nice one with Krenko as well, giving it haste. So they seem more focused on comboing with their commander as opposed to being a typical red anger deck with lots of burn spells, maybe. Cycles go for blood. Alright, so we'll kick things off with a Sky Skiff. That way I can play Magda into Cavalry next turn, make an extra treasure. Hasty Krenko gonna get in already. And that's gonna get out of hand. And then I suppose I don't have to attack with the Sky Skiff, I can just leave it on defense. Alright, let's see what our opponent's got. If they kill Magda, it's probably game over. It's gonna be claim the first board on cavalry. Crew the Skiff in response. And attacks with everyone. Well, I guess we'll block the Insider, maybe. Any burn spell that finishes off Skiff could also finish off Magda, although they could have a pump spell instead, I suppose. And preventing one damage in the grand scheme of things probably doesn't matter a whole lot. Right, Mox Amber. So, what can I do this turn? Not gonna be able to play Paradox Engine, I'm afraid. Since we only have the two dwarves and the three treasures. So that probably means I gotta go digging. If I reunion, I get to dig the deepest. Smashing. Let's see, can we smashing for enough to kill Krenko? If I play land, play Mox Amber, that's five, plus three treasures, eight mana. You know, that would technically be enough to kill Krenko. Although that's my entire turn gone. And we are still facing an army of 1 1 tokens. So I don't know if that's the play. I think we cathartic, discarding cards, thrill. Or maybe smashing, keep the thrill. Right, there's more dwarves. This 
So I could play reinforcements. Or I could play Rimrock Knights. Could even play Goldspan Dragon. Either way, it's looking like we're gonna be setting up for a big turn next turn. And just try to survive here. So we'll play reinforcements. And then pass a turn, I think. And I might have to chumble a Krenko. Phoenix, all right, giving Krenko flying. And four additional power, or three additional power. So that's a lot of goblins incoming. Uh, at least our opponent stepped out so we can safely block the tokens now. So let's see. I can crew the skiff. Does skiff need to chomp? Would not be ideal. If I take seven, I'm at five. And then I can block enough of the ground creatures to survive, I think. So I'm not gonna throw the sky skiff under the bus just yet. block like this and then we're going to one here essentially and then I can still crew the sky skiff to make two more treasure Alright, so definitely kick things off by getting Paradox Engine. Poem's gonna pass priority here. That's kind of them. Then we can cast Rimrock Knights. I guess I can use the Adventure as an extra untapped trigger. Make more treasure. Get back the assault cards. Play the assault cards. We'll crew this one. Then Magda can get a Chromas Memorial. Those are good starting points. Then I can still thrill discarding castle. Make more treasure. Maybe cast a Goldspan Dragon. And we're fully going off here. Can still play Heart of Kiron, which I can crew. Sky Sovereign, which I can crew.
Probably could have sequenced this a little bit better. And then Magda can search up a Dracoseth. And for the grand finale, a Terror of Mount Velus. And that should be enough. GG's. Alright, thanks to your opponent for letting us combo off here. And that was Magda Brawl in action. So definitely place like a combo deck, so don't treat it like a creature tribal deck. Need to make sure to have a vehicle and a dwarf in your opening hand pretty much every time. It is definitely very disruptable, so if the opponent does have some cheap removal for Magda, it often slows down the deck enough where it's not very effective anymore. But if you get to do your thing, usually by turn 5 you can combo off and kill the opponent in one big flurry like we saw here. So let me know in the comments which Brawl deck you would like to see next, since we might be able to do another video before the event is over. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.